Good afternoon slash evening. Uh, I'm Tony Mo, I'm the president of Dignity Baltimore and also on board of our Lady of the Lord Mounts. Welcome to everybody. Uh, this is the 18th Sunday, uh, Sunday of Ordinary Time. Um, we are an inclusive Catholic, independent Catholic parish. We celebrate the liturgy and we do not see communion as a reward. So all who come to the altar with reverence are welcome. Please let's take a moment, put ourselves in the presence of God, and we'll start the liturgy with 748 in your gathering.
never fails. God our Father, gifts without measure that flow from your goodness to bring us your peace. Our life is your gift. Guide our life's journey, for only your love makes us whole. Keep us strong in your love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Corrupted through deceitful desires. 
desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
no matter how well intentioned you are, it's just not enough. There's always something else that will. In our story from the Old Testament, as well as from the Gospel, we see examples of how some are never satisfied. There's always something else. In a reading from Exodus, we see the Jewish people grumbling about being hungry, adding to their superb demonstration of complaining as a hierarchy. They spread the rumor that Moses had brought them there just to watch them die from hunger. They even go so far as saying, we wish we were slaves again back in Egypt, because at least there we ate. Which, in all honesty, was probably more nostalgia than reality. God must be saying to himself, wait a minute, hold on. Weren't you the people who for hundreds of years prayed to me for deliverance from the Egyptians? Don't you remember the plagues that I inflicted on Egypt to get the Pharaoh to free you? And how I saved you from his army as you crossed the Red Sea? And after you were in the desert, do you remember how you were thirsty and I said to Moses, strike that rock with your staff and water flowed out to quench your thirst? And now I have brought you with quail to you. And a miraculous harvest of fine flakes that you turned into bread. But you know, at every turn you gripe and complain. No matter what tile I wear to show my care for you, you will not be satisfied. There is always something else. Those flakes of uh, hoarfrost that you figured out could be made into bread, those and everything else came from me, says God. When the flakes appeared, you had no idea what it was, which is why you called it manna, which literally means, what the heck is this? Yet in my wisdom and compassion, I provided you with the means to make a form of bread. Nowhere in there do I hear any expression of thanks. Nowhere in there do I hear you trying to do things to honor me. Yet my love and concern for you persists. It is not until centuries later when they reflected on this experience and saw the gift that God provided as a sign of his enduring love when in Psalm 27, they looked back on that man and called it the bread of angels. Now here's Jesus. If you recall last week's gospel for those of you who are at church, He had fed the 5,000 with seven loaves and two fishes. And just after he fed them, by showing them how to be generous, you remember I said the miracle is not the bread and the fishes miraculously appeared. The miracle was that 5,000 hearts turned from being selfish and protecting what they had in their clothes for sustenance and shared it, and when they did that, there was enough left over for everybody to go and seven baskets to be filled with leftovers. But after that happened, that miraculous change of hearts, he snuck away and was able to take the crowds who learned to turn the event into a service. So he fled to Capernaum only to have the crowds follow him there. How did they knew he was going to Capernaum is beyond me, but details, details. Back on that hilltop, they ate their fill for sure. But their hearts did not stand in awe of the amazing nature of that miracle. 
So here we are again, looking for more signs. There's always something else. Here again, they are asking for bread. And so Jesus once again tries to open their hearts to let them know that the true way to fulfill their hunger is to recognize that He is the bread of heaven. He is the new bread of angels. He leads them to quick questions about the quality of their lives. In the desert, their hungry ancestors had encountered the love of God. Would these people now be content with the sustenance they could find at the local bakers? Or did they long for more? When Jesus offered them true bread, they responded, give us this bread always. And so he answered, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. I am the bread of life is not what they were looking for. Instead of promising a free lunch, Jesus was inviting them to be nourished by his life. To assume his way of being as the path that would bring them everything they could have wanted. The miraculous sharing of bread that had happened among them offered the key to understanding Jesus' offer. When the small boy gave all that he had, his seven loaves to them, and two fishes, they saw for themselves that those who are willing to share everything will never hunger themselves. If they wanted to do the works of God, if they wanted the food that endures, they needed only to believe in Jesus enough to do what he did. And that's our call to. Jesus' sharing of himself as the bread of life illustrates the great potential of human life. The Son of God entered our history not to wow us with miracles, but to show us how we can live, or as Paul suggests, as new selves. People truly renewed in spirit. We who love the stories of Jesus can and must take responsibility for them by making them come true in our own day. And my friends, our world is in desperate need of Jesus' teachings about love and compassion. You know, this week on the 6th and 9th of August, we recall the only use of nuclear weapons first in Hiroshima, and then three days later on Akasaka, killing nearly a quarter of a million people, like that. And it ended, by the way, the largest of this violent military conflict in human history, which killed over 53 million people. War and killing has continued across time and the planet. There's no shortage of hate or violence or trauma. And this is why we must never, never, never stop being advocates for peace. Let us work as well here and now within our own land that the division and violence and evil will cease before it's too late. May we nourish by the bread of life be the Lord's faithful instruments in converting hearts to generosity and love. You see, my friends, God doesn't really care which time we wear, as long as we wear one.
Would you stand and join me in professing our faith? We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, one in being, the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, the Spirit is worshipped and glorified and has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, let us bring to our Father our needs for the bread of life in our lives and in the world. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the 10 people killed and 42 people injured this past week in shootings across the country, that our country will end this slaughter caused by guns, we pray. Lord, Lord. Let us pray for our country in this time of turmoil that we will never devalue the freedoms that we have. We pray. Lord, Lord. For the LGBTQI community across the world, especially those in lands where they are oppressed and persecuted for who they are, and may the United States never become such a land again. We pray. Lord. Lord. Let us pray for our community that the Enduro Knots will enable us to be a place of solace for marginalized, discouraged, disengaged and disaffected Catholics and others who seek God with a sincere heart, we pray. Lord, Lord. Let us pray for the peoples of the world who are dealing with war and unrest in their lands, that the hatred may end and peace be restored as soon as possible, we pray. Lord, Lord. Let us pray for families and for all those who are without food and shelter here in our own land and across the world, we pray. Lord, Lord. We lift up to you, Lord, the prayers and concerns that we hold in our hearts, as well as the prayers that have been asked of your mother, our lady, on your own knots, we pray. Lord, Lord, let us pray for all those who are in need of healing, especially for John Gray and Allison, his wife, for Jerry Doolin and Chris Mullen, for William Parrish, David Hansen, and for Helen Albert and her husband. <clears throat> for Ron Pettit and Michelle Drayson, Agnes and Johnny Donahue, for Mary McDonald. For Michael Gibson, Don, Bill Payton, Danny, Barton, and Anna. For Denise Attendant, Mildred Wessner, Scott Trees, and David Horn. For Diane, uh, Michael Reggio, and for Melissa Reggio Quackenbush, Connie Patello, and Diana Scales. For Natalie and Claire Ponabianco, Catherine Quayle, and Karen Bono, we pray. Lord, Lord, Lord. Let us raise up to God all who have died, we pray. Lord, Lord. For whom or what else shall we pray this evening?
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this war and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ to come to himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer our food of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name and for all the good of all His church. Merciful Lord, make holy these gifts and let our spiritual sacrifice make us an everlasting gift to you. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord, our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do always and everywhere to give you thanks. When your children sinned and wandered far from your friendship, you reunited them with yourself through the blood of your Son and the power of the Holy Spirit. You gather them together into your church to be one as you, Father, are one with your Son and the Holy Spirit. You call them to be your people, to praise your wisdom in all your works. You make them the body of Christ and the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And so in our joy, we sing to your glory with all the choirs of angels. life. 
We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with George, our bishop, all the clergy, and all the people of God. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles, all the saints of the, of the social justice here in the United States, Harriet Tubman, Sister Thea Brown, Reverend Mark Luther King, Dorothy Day, Peter Moran, Harvey Milk, and Bishop John Newman, Franciscan Father Michael Judge, and Jesuit Father John McNeil, Mother Catherine Drexel, Mother Elizabeth Ann Seaton, and Mother Frances Cabrini, and all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and
And friends, this is Jesus, the bread of life, who calls upon us to help him change the world. Happy are we to be called to his son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Protect us with your love and prepare us for eternal redemption. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Um, not really an announcement, but I just want to thank Megan and Sam for showing up here. I mean, this may have been the bread of angels, but this was the voice of angels. I've got to tell you. What is it? Uh, anybody else? Did I forget anything? This coming, this coming week, we are having a renewal of wedding vows by Frank and Gary. So uh, come here with your best stuff on next week because we're going to be, you know, throwing a lie at rice and probably unless one of you is the flower girl or something like that. You never know, right? But anyway, I, we got to get together this week to make sure that the program runs. Okay. Thank you for coming. Anything else? And in that case. Let us honor Our Lady of your Gods. <clears throat> we'll be singing Regina Chaley, first the Latin, and then after we do the prayers, the English version, number 447.
spread the good news of the gospel. Thank you for that. Um, just a reminder, there's fellowship downstairs if you want to join us for snacks. And um, the outro song is number 853, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, number 853.